everybody, Kay here at the Late Bloomer Homestead channel, but we're over at the Bamboo Oasis with Daryl today. We're going to see how the trellises turned out, but it's been one year since I was here and we did a complete walk around. I think that video was like 50 minutes long and it became viral. A lot of people saw it and loved it. What he has done in, in developing uh, his gardens here. And so we're going to take a walk around and see how it looks one year later. So stay tuned. Hi. Petey. <laughs> Petey. Petey. <laughs> Good boy. Welcome back to Bamboo Oasis, everyone. And uh, greetings to all the new subscribers that Kay's picked up recently. Um, she's done a bunch of videos here in the past. You can go back and watch them. But uh, I have a an opening in the forest. I'm surrounded by forest land. And then within that, my house, I have surrounded it by gardens. And I'm still in the process of completing that surrounding. But And I have a lot of bamboo, 35 varieties. There's a lot you can see from the front of the house. And I, I just love the bamboo. I love gourds. I grow a lot of gourds and make things out of gourds. Um, so anyway, uh, the last time Kay was here, we talked about these new trellises that I called them. I'm now calling them arbors, because I think if it goes over your head, it becomes an arbor. So I built four arbors. And the way I built them was I drove two T-posts into the ground on each side. Petey, quit eating my beans, please. He likes the lima beans as much as I do. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then I used a, a cattle panel that I, uh, they, they come in 16 foot lengths and I cut it in half so I had two 8 foot sections. I stood each of them upright and wired them to these T-posts. Well that only goes up about halfway on the cattle panel and the rest is up in the air. Uh, this one's actually a little, this one particular one's a little shorter than 8 feet. And all the rest are 8 feet. Uh, anyway, after I build them, and I mentioned it in, the, in that video, it felt a little floppy up there, you know, and, and when I attached the bamboo poles and connected the two together, that did make it a little more rigid. But I still had a little play, and I got to thinking, too, you know, like, well, yeah, when that's all covered with vines and rainwater and wind comes up, I mean, who knows what'll happen? Well, what happened? Come with me. <laughs> we'll go up to the third arbor, which is king of the garden pole lima beans growing there, and... What came out after? What kind? King of the Garden, it's called. It's a real big lima bean. Okay. Okay, and, and that one we were under is a Christmas lima bean, which is also a very large lima bean. And this one right here is Scarlet Runners. Yes, and I recognize. See, there's bean, we've been eating off of it already. See, they get, they get really big and fat. I recognize the flowers. Yes. Like that. The beans are beautiful. Yeah, yeah, the beans are Are you eating them fresh? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yep, as they come in. So anyway, I looked out after the storm, and this whole arbor had bent over and that side was touching the top of the tomato cage. Oh no. It was that bent over. And at first I thought, oh my gosh, that's probably torn vines and all kinds of stuff. But as usual, looking for a solution to a problem, I first think of bamboo and it was the best solution. So I got me a bamboo pole. I put a little notch in the top to catch on that top wire and I pushed it back into position. And then I put one on the other side in case the wind would come from that direction and let that fall away from the bamboo pole. So now it's real solid. Oh, that's great. But this is a temporary fix that I had to do right now because the vines are on there. Right. What I want to do, and I will do before next season when there's no vines, and I'll do it this winter probably, at each tea post I'm going to put an eight-foot bamboo pole like I did at the front entrance there. Right. And that way, and wire it to the wire and wire it to the post and that will make it totally rigid. I don't have to worry about that. So it actually looks really nice too. It's more tropical yeah, to have yeah. that front facing. Well, that's why I did that. That was just a decorative thing that I did there. That's what I mean. But it turned out to be functional because now that's even just having two posts on makes a, a big difference, you know. But okay. I'm going to do all four. So anyway, so if if you took my advice and built the trellis, and now you're finding it floppy in the wind, uh, that's my solution. <laughs> And Let's then we could look over here's the arch that we also talked about. Okay. And I, in fact, I got After some, you. I got some seed from Kay. 
it's a lima bean. What was the red? What is? What's it called? Red what? It's red Worcestershire Indian pole bean lima. Okay, well that's what's on the first cattle panel. That, I did it on. When I plant these arches, I, whatever I plant on this side, I plant on the opposite side, so they'll just go up and join each other, and then I know everything in there is, is that variety of bean or whatever. So then over here, uh, I actually split this into two separate things. It's just this area here and across are uh, the Gold Marie uh, okay. yellow flat potted bean. And then this little section is, I only had a few seeds, I got and I got it from a seed exchange, and it's called Sadie's Lima. It's a kind of a small lima bean, but uh, I wanted to make seed mostly. Can I ask a question? Um, you know, I have a lot of damage on my leaves, you know, from mm -hmm. bugs. And d Do they still make beans if they destroy a lot of the leaves? Okay, it depends what's getting after them. And, you know, I don't know what this is because I'm not seeing any signs of an encroachment from something coming chewing on them. But I was going to talk about bean problems. And, and for all the new gardeners out there, I mean, don't get discouraged if you plant something and it doesn't do well. I, every year, no matter, I, I've been gardening for 47 years. Every year there's going to be something that just messes up or doesn't, doesn't thrive, even though it did the year before. And, you know, mm -hmm. so don't, don't expect uh, a success with everything you do. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I grow a lot of different varieties of beans here. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing a lot of varieties now is I'm searching for and finding a few varieties that are resistant to the Mexican bean beetle. And that's what does the most damage for me. We'll get down here to the TP and where else do I have? Oh, uh, we'll go see some bush beans that are, that are getting hit by the bean beetle. And so I'm finding some things. The best one I found so far is on the front TP is the Chinese yard long beans. Uh, I have the red fa red noodle, they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mexican never, bean beetles don't touch them. Never grown that. I need to yeah, they're get good. some. Your tomatoes look fantastic. Some Can we them. talk about the these, just for the people who haven't seen the other video, you, you always grow in these uh, cages and you've kept these cages for 35 years or something? <laughs> yeah, these have been around at least 30 years. I've been keeping these cages going. And you know, they always looked rusty right from the beginning, but they don't really rust through very well. The, the prongs that go down in the bottom into yeah. the soil, that's the first thing that, that's going to corrode. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do have a few cages where I had to go ahead and cut all those and the bottom ring off and make the next set be the prongs, mm -hmm. so a little bit lower cage. I've done that to a few of Is them. Is that all you use to hold them up? It's just yes. the little... The prongs in no the additional nothing else wow no. i mean i have occasionally had a tomato that just got so huge and maybe the wind got hold of it and pushed it over a little bit and i might have to use some bamboo again for a prop <laughs> <laughs> what i'm doing here and i'm a little behind on it but you need to keep these if you're going to grow in this cage the whole idea is to keep everything inside the cage as it grows until it spills out over the top and cascades down and then you get more tomatoes on the outside But you'll get lots of tomatoes on the inside before that happens and how many varieties are you growing this year? Uh, I see a lot of cages. I think I have I think I only have eight or nine varieties probably I, I, I cut back a little on the tomato varieties and how many cages total? Uh, usually I do around 50 so there's wow. probably 40 or 50 here right now. Wow Yeah, and I they look so healthy. Yeah, these are good doing real good here and over here's these are all Berkeley tie dye, which you're the one that got me. I never heard of Berkeley tie dye. Oh, before. it's the best. Yeah, well, that's one of the best. Are. Look how good these are doing. And there's lots of green tomatoes on there down in there. You can see that. Oh yeah. I haven't had anything ripe yet. But, wow. Yeah, these are all doing great. And uh, fantastic. I'm so jealous. Well, we'll see what happens. Hey, well, look. Let, let me tell you and everybody else. Yep. Now I have been gardening here for 20 say 21 years mm -hmm. okay and I have built this soil up and that's been my focus the whole time is to build the soil up when you know when I have insect problems I don't look for sprays I don't try to I don't try to fight mother nature I accept okay uh, either that was not a good variety to grow or I haven't built my soil up enough mm -hmm. okay once you have really rich soil like like for potatoes I remember when I first started growing potatoes in a new garden just decimated by the Colorado potato beetle. I, I, it was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And even for the first couple years, until mm. I got that soil build up, then it didn't. It wasn't a problem. And now, I mean, I have such good soil here now. I, I don't even think about them. I, I never see them. Wow. So you know, it's all about the soil. That is the main thing. 
Now, these broccoli look like this because they're, are they from spring or from yet last yeah, year? <laughs> no, 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 this is spring planting, but the, you know, they, the bugs are hitting them. And we've been eating a few heads and I, I, meant to, I meant to eat a head yesterday, but we discovered we had ripe sweet corn. And so that just, that canceled everything else out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, no I gotta, question there. Gotta eat some broccoli. What is this whole, this whole beautiful row here? Yeah, okay. Oh, that's, I see one here. Yeah, these, there's two varieties here. This is a yellow, this is called Cherokee, uh, a yellow wax bean. Mm -hmm. And then it changes somewhere down here. Right here, this is growing the, uh, the green Romano flat potted bean. You love those. I do, I love them, they're great. And, and, and this is a bush form of it. And notice that, I'm, I'm noticing that this is doing real good against the Mexican bean beetle. Not much trouble at all. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I guess this, what you look for is on the bottom. Is this the damage from the Mexican bean beetle? No, you know what? This is, I was looking at this yesterday. If I look really close, right here, see all those little black spots? I think those are what is doing, those are little insects, I believe, doing the damage. There's these little black specks. Hmm. Okay, and they're eating that up. So I don't know what that is. Okay. And, and like I said, I don't, I don't try to battle insect problems. I just take it as a sign I haven't built the soil up enough or I'm growing the wrong variety. Well, I need a better attitude like that. <laughs> I really do. Well, you know, and it helps if you have livestock. Like All I have is chickens, but you know, like, like all, I never have luck with cabbage. It always ends up like this. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know why I tried again this year, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, I'll pull them up and give it, the chickens will love it. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah. So oh, when yeah. you have something, you know, of course you can compost it if Look you don't at, have livestock. You've got a swallow. Yeah, beautiful. Oh wow. Oh, there you go. That's a bonus. Look at Pulled that. Pulled in for a pose. <laughs> Going in for the close up. Aww. <coughs> Such a blessing to see a, a stunner like that. This is uh, Shiso. Yeah, I didn't, never knew the name of it, but I, I always pull that stuff. I don't like that stuff. It gets big, big, big. Have you tasted the, the leaves? No. Taste the leaf. It's, you, it's edible. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. It's what the Japanese use in uh, sushi to... It's actually very nutritious. Yeah. You may or it's may good. not like it, but... Yeah, it tastes good. Cool. See, there's all kinds of weeds you do. You just pull them up and throw them away. I know. Put it in your salad. You know, lamb's quarters, man. People that don't know about lamb's quarters, you're really missing out. That is a premier herb. I know, and I don't. I don't. Green. I haven't found any. I know they grow everywhere, but uh, we'll get you. I'll give you seed. This what one. are those uh, plants with the big? Uh, those are all butternut squash. Well, those are volunteers right there. I assume they're butternut. And, and these I mean, are butternut that I planted right here. Okay, I'm asking about this. Uh, oh, that's a milkweed. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. Well, and because we'll, I have a couple, we'll get down here by the bananas. Oh, or and some. the and this too. Yeah, there's some that are already flowering down there. Okay, here. great. See that? Now this you wanted to say? Okay, yeah, this bed. When I need to do this really soon, um, I kept this open, and I oh, had my, oh, this bed. Yeah, the well, empty and, one. you know, the, here's kale on the front, and my broccoli and cabbage was on the back, and then I kept this covered with hay, which I just now pulled aside, and I should have rotated. I had to rototiller out here. I should have tilled this. Uh, I'm going to do a late planting, probably today or tomorrow, all the way down here of uh, maybe two or three varieties of bush beans. Uh, again, you know, it you seems like... You just don't have enough beans, do you? Right. You, always you have never have enough beans. <laughs> and I, I'm doing more experiments. I'm still... Because, yeah. see, it seems like the later in the summer, the worse the Mexican bean beetles are. That's why I, I get my beans in the ground. And they don't like cold soil, so you got to wait a little, but I get them in as soon as I can and try to beat the beetles, you know. Um, like the, the Gold Marie flat pod that I love so much is, is very susceptible to them, you know. Do you grow field peas as well? I don't recall I have. you. I, I didn't plant any this year. Okay. No. no. And I just wonder if it's the same issues. I don't know. Because well, my I, peas have had a lot of no, bug probably damage. probably not. Probably not because I grew uh, yellow crowder peas and black eyed peas before that, that they didn't seem to get hit by the bean beetle. Okay. And uh, all the lima beans, the, these pole limas or I have some bush limas down here I'll show you. Uh, they seem kind of impervious to the bean beetles. This kale looks amazing. I grew this one time in California. This variety, this curly yeah. green leaf. You know that's the problem for me with kale. Wow. I, I absolutely love it. But, How much can you eat? But it comes on at the same time as the green beans. Oh. And I like the green beans better. If I have a choice, I'll go with the green beans, you know. Yeah. But, but I love kale. 
And I wish it would look this good in the fall when everything's finishing up and I'd have this for a few months. So I wonder why it doesn't. Well, maybe it's the timing. You know, I used to plant some kale this time of year and eat it in October, but it, it was pretty small and it might not make it through the winter, you know, unless you cover it or something. Right. But, uh, well, do you preserve kale in any way? Well, I have dried it before. Uh, into powder? Or well, crumble? you can crush it into a powder, sure. I mean, I just... I. It's did it little so small pieces amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's looking good right now for sure. Yeah. I think this milkweed is blooming. That butterfly bush back here is starting to bloom. Oh, that's pretty. I've got a butterfly bush. Yeah, it's a darker purple. Come on. Last arbor at the top of my garden. I've got four levels here. Uh, and this is Lufa, which has done the best job of covering across the top. The others are still working on it. But uh, I did not have leaves that looked that humongous when I grew Lufa? Uh, well, remember, oh, yours mine's is different, different. Mine's a different variety. I want some of your seed. I oh. would rather grow your kind because okay. it peels so easily. You know. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But these make gig these make long Lufa, about, mm. about you know two, three and, feet and, long. And what do you do with that? I mean, well, you just have two feet long sponges. Well, no, I cut them into sections anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, you know, little four or five inch long things. Okay. Yeah. But this is going to have a whole lot of weight on it, you know, when these loofahs are green, they're heavy. Oh, heavens, so, I know. you know, I, I got it braced. I got to put the other side on. Yeah. And the only reason I can't do the bamboo thing on the edge right now is the vines are, I damage vines trying yeah. to wire that bamboo in there. All right, this bed it looks weedy right now, but I just planted potatoes here for, for a fall planting. And so I'm going to cover all this with hay and I'll knock out all the weeds. Yeah. And this big weed I'm letting grow, this big green thing, is lamb's quarters that I'm going to... Oh, this is! Seed. Wow! So this will make a lot of seed, and what I do every fall is I collect the seed and I run around. I just spread it all over my beds. It's, I figure I'm going to have weeds come up anyway. I might, might as well be this one, because this is edible and delicious. And How much do you eat this? I mean... Uh, you don't eat it now, oh. because it, it's kind of tough and the taste isn't there. You get them when they're, I don't know eight inches or less kind of when they're young tender greens mm -hmm. that's the time to get them and and a lot of people can them and you know preserve them for later in the year watch out you're on the potato mound am i already mm -hmm. oh yeah i got oh, two oh, mounds oh, right oh, here oh, oh, oh i'm sorry oh, no, that's all right oh i see yeah oh you went right around the two <laughs> yeah i just filled in <laughs> those two space. plants those kind of look like peas coming up but you said they're morning glory yeah it's morning glory it's a problem weed around here for me so I'll be smothering this whole place in hay in a couple of days here. Well, you were lucky to get hay. You're always lucky to get good hay, unsprayed hay, especially, you know. Right. That's the hardest thing. And before we go down, there's the entrance to the chicken enclosure. Oh, and hey, enclosure. let's go over there. I don't think Just we ever quick. did that the last time. No, I mean, we've, we've gone in the chicken house and seen that, but I never talked about this yard. Oh, this is, is this dill? This is dill, right? What's that? Dill? Yeah, dill. Oh, I tried so hard to grow dill this year. Look, unsuccessful that's a persimmon tree that came up from one of the persimmons that fell off of the big tree there. oh my god where's the big right, tree right there that, that, that tree right there this big one yep. oh my gosh the persimmons yep and oh. there's a baby right there oh i want persimmons so bad i keep coming up here and chopping these off with the shovel i need to do it now so I, i'm just trying to kill off this whole big banana thing here you know? yeah it's just spreading all right, so I built this chicken yard this way because of something I saw when I went to the Nashville Zoo one time. The original land that they donated for the zoo has the original farmhouse there, and they keep up a garden as it was in the 1800s, growing the varieties they did and all that. And they had a chicken thing set up the way they used to do it. Mm. And so they had their chicken house attached to a completely enclosed, like I have here. It goes, I have netting over the top. There's, there's rabbit wire here, you know, chicken wire here, and cattle panels all the way. So, you know, a dog's not going to get through, you know, and that chicken wire comes down and goes under the soil a little bit. Yeah, you got to do that for raccoons. Yeah, so things don't dig under. Well, I've had no trouble with anything getting into this yard, but the cool thing that they learned over there, see what I have inside? And it, it, I'm ready to, well, I put wood chips in pretty thick. And what that does is they can constantly go around and scratch and find grubs and things that are in that decomposing wood chip. You know, it turns into really good soil. And maybe every few years I'll go in and shovel that out and, you know, use it when my gardens are in compost. And, and then I'll put new wood chips in for them. Mm -hmm. So this really works, you know, and, and you, I have no worries about predators. Uh, I mean, a rat or a mouse 
can get in my chicken house and does occasionally and eat some food and that kind of thing. But uh, and snakes, I do have usually a black snake getting the eggs. I caught two last year and I caught one about a month ago. Oh wow! So you know it's not too bad. I give them a long drive. They they, they end up about five miles from here. <laughs> have a new life. One of these arbors is you, you'll notice like you know. They don't do it exactly the way you want. It doesn't happen automatically. You know, I come out here every few days and feed vines in and send them where they ought to go. And like this one needs to work its way to the top, not out in the middle. This is a later planting of broccoli I did. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to do. It's getting a little bug eaten on the leaves, but you never know. I've had ugly looking plants make real nice heads. And then over beyond over there is just a bunch of decorative, you know, flowering bushes and things. Rose, forsythia, crepe myrtle. Uh, I got some castor beans that are going to grow there, but you want a bok choy? I can send you home with a bok choy. Yeah. Okay, they're, they're great. And then these are all my peppers. Some are doing real good. Some a little bit. Some are a little weedy. I need to get on. This lower bed here is uh, this is my favorite bush lima bean. You can see all the flowers on there. These things put out so many beans, I can't believe it. And I got several rows in here. They've kind of grown together. You can hardly tell that they're rows. Mm -hmm. And a few volunteer uh, sunflowers came up, so I left them stay. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that'll be nice. Petey, come on, quit eating my beans. Come on, look at him. He's eating my beans. Come on. A little grazing dog. Yeah, I got some work to do on this. Guys... Oh, look at the size of these. Which one did you say that one? Yeah, this is a Christmas lima. Yeah, they get bigger. You see, the limas are getting... Didn't we call those butter beans growing up? Yeah. I have some damage on these leaves. It's not the Mexican bean beetle again. It's that same little itsy bitsy black spot of a bug that's doing it. Don't know what it is. I don't know, you know, how well this will survive, but you know, I'm already getting beans forming, so I'm sure I'll get a harvest out of this. The thing is, you, you want pole beans will go all season till frost. Oh, as wow. long as you keep picking the beans off, you know, if they're successful making mature seed, they shut down. But if you keep them picked, they'll keep producing all summer. But if, oh, really? Yeah, that's what that's the difference. Between, see, bush beans do a big flush, and you get a huge harvest out of bush beans, and then they, they're done. Oh, I didn't realize that. You might, yeah, you might get, you know, several pickings. They'll go on for a couple weeks, and then they're done. Okay. But if you can keep your pole beans healthy and away from the bugs, it'll go all summer long, as long as you keep it picked. Now, you know, like I said, if you let a seed get mature, that vine will say, okay, I did what I was supposed to. I'm yeah, done. We're done. We'll shut down. All right, this bed here looks weedy and junky, but underneath it all, it, this is a, a lot of rows of potatoes that I haven't dug up yet. So I, I'll be digging all up in this area soon. And beyond the teepee over here, that's also all potatoes. I think this is that little black bug again. I don't think it's a Mexican. I, see, we, I need to go where we have Mexican. I'll show you the Mexican bean beetles. You, yeah. Now, on the, you'll see little... Um, Yellow uh, Ooh, look at this. critters crawling on the underside. Yeah, Are these, these rattlesnake or yeah, this is rattlesnake, and I missed them, and they're just going to go to seed, and that's oh, okay. okay. I want to make because that's seed. the fattest rattlesnake I've ever seen. Yeah, they're they're on their way to being seeds. This half of the teepee is uh, the um, rattlesnake bean. This half is Kentucky Wonder, which I never grew in my life, and I thought I'd try it out. I heard about it all the time. I think I know why they call it Kentucky Wonder. You come out here every day and you wonder if you're ever going to get any beans off of this thing. <laughs> These came on earlier, much earlier, making beans. I had several harvests of the rattlesnake and still just maybe a couple little ones. I, I harvested three of these yesterday. It was, I kept them separate so I could show mom. You want to see a Kentucky Wonder Bean? There's might be all we get this year. <laughs> yeah, this one on the right here has a little color left in it. The other ones are fading a little bit. Have you had any monarchs at all? No, I haven't seen a monarch here for a decade. I saw one, one this year. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. No, I have other big butterflies, but I don't see the monarchs. This is so different from the milkweed that I grew in California. Yeah, First I First of all, I you didn't have these huge leaves. I mean, right. this almost looks like a, you know, one of those indoor plants where right, the, the right. leaves look just like this, but they get shiny. What is that called? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, though. Yeah, I do. It's a very common house plant. Yep. Okay, and you've got your cannas coming up beside your Here's bananas. Oh, interesting. We got a nice little double one to harvest today. Ooh. See that? We got that. Oh, one. I'm staying for lunch, I guess. <laughs> We're having sweet corn today. Oh my goodness. Might, I was thinking you might want to. You could run into the market and then Ooh. come back and have lunch. Oh, Daryl, I'm so jealous. 
I have such a hard time growing the Genovese hmm. Italian. Oh, oh. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, look at that butterfly. Oh, where'd it go? Yeah, we could start right here. In amongst all these weeds, this is actually a winter hardy gardenia. And Ooh. It has made a couple flowers, so I know how good it smells. And I gotta keep the weeds away better than that. I, I also got, this is parsley that needs weeded. We've had a lot of rain lately, and Oh, I know the weeds Keeping are just... up with the weeds is becoming a real thing. Oh, I hate this weed right here. It gets all a bunch of jaggers and gets your fingers bad. Let me see. I, I guess it's purslane, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's real thick. It's just tall purslane. It gets jaggers on it. I've got this purslane growing out of all of my pots. I actually seeded it, if you can believe. Oh my gosh, I hate that weed. Okay. It's actually very good for you. Yeah, though. it's good for you. Yep. Oh, you've got thyme. No, this is marjoram. Oh, marjoram. I'm trying that out for the first time. Oh, I love marjoram. Yeah, it's not thriving real big for me, but... Hey, you got more than I do. And then this is regular basil here, and I've let it go a little too far and started to flower. It'd been better to get it a little sooner, but I'll be cutting this real soon and drying it for winter time use. Okay. And here's a, if you want to taste it, Kay, here's a... I just did. I, no, I this is off this. This is the lemon basil. Oh, okay. Which is real lemon. nice. I, I love lemon basil. Love it favorite basils. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's very interesting. And then I have chives here. This is cinnamon basil. Have I have chives. It's about <laughs> a quarter of this. Do you do you cut them back to keep to... Hey, yeah, listen, this got... This, this got, almost looks like green onions. This, this got chives? weedy with with the uh, ground ivy like about a month ago. And so I came in here and I totally weedy did everything. Chives, everything to the ground. Mm. And put down a covering of hay, and all the chives. Now the, the weeds are gone, and now it's just the chives have come up. Oh, how it, brilliant! Because they do it really fast, you know. I cut them several times throughout the year, because then you're getting, you know, young, fresh growth instead of stuff that's been around drying out for a few months. I mean, they're almost so. I mean, they're so hardy; they almost look like green onions. Yeah, they spread, and you know, you, once you have them, you'll have them. Can you give me a? Oh, I got starts. I can, we got shunk? some up in that bed. I could get you easy. Okay, great. What is, is that a weed or is that? Yeah, that's weed. That's a weed, This whole okay. section got taken out with some weeds. Okay. This is cinnamon basil. Ooh. Taste that I'll one. Try that. You're going to like that. Guaranteed. It's strong. Mm-hmm. Mm mm. It almost has a bit of an anise, um, mm -hmm. fennel taste. And this odd color one, maybe you know it, is holy basil. Yes. And I... this is the first time I have searched for this seed for years. Because of the properties, I've, the stuff I'm reading about this, it seems like such a useful, interesting plant. I mean, you know, it's edible, and you, you can make tea mm -hmm. from the leaves, and it, it's a calming thing. It relieves anxiety and all. You can even smoke the leaves and get that same effect. Wow. You know? And so, I mean, it's it's an interesting plant. So I'm, I'm getting ready to, you know, cut a bunch of all these herbs. Are we need cut. all the calming plants we can exactly. get. Exactly. <laughs> with yeah. everything that's going on. All right. Now I'm going to show you my decimated beans here. There's two varieties. Wow. Now these are all being kept for seed, but this, there is a Mexican bean beetle. That is the culprit that lays the eggs. There's the bean beetle that'll eat wow. them up. Well, it doesn't, I don't know if it eats much. It lays the eggs. I guess it's doing a little eating. Here's what does the eating. You usually find them on the bottom of the leaves. This yellow, that is what does the eating. And you will find little egg clusters on the bottom sides of the leaves also, and you can just kind of rub them off and fight it off. Anyway, this variety is called Goldenrod, and it made a lot of beans. I mean, we got a lot to eat, and then I left these for seed. Let's see if one of these lemons is ready. Yeah. Yeah. There, come on. Come home to Papa. Come on. It's your time. Oh, nice. I grew that once. Yeah? I've never done that before. My first time to have them. Let's see. Ooh, sorry, I have to look at this. This is so pretty. Oh, that's the anise hyssop. Again, oh. I should have. Well, it's okay to pick that now for tea because the, the flowers are just as good as the leaves for the tea. Well. But this brings in your pollinators, I'll tell you. I mean, the hummingbirds. Oh my gosh, and, I see everything. Wow, I wish I had that. Something like that. So this, this other bean here was called Tema. It's a green bean round kind of a round pod man it got hit early with the bean beetles and it, it lost the battle quick mm -hmm. so that's probably one i'm not going to grow anymore although i am saving some seed here but 
Uh, it's probably going to be off my list. You know what this is, right? Yeah, this is something I'm going to grab and pull right out of there. Uh, that that I grew last year thinking it was ground cherry. Yeah, I've but, done that. But it's, um, they don't taste good. Right. So what have you got going here? Okay, all four of these pineapples uh, were started at different times, but they were from a grocery store pineapple. Wow. You know, you just, I'll show you indoors, I have a, you just twist the top off pull about the bottom inch of leaves off of it and keep it submerged in water at that lower level and it takes a while maybe a month or more and you, it'll develop roots in uh, the water if you're lucky and and it's you know I have tried so many and I get like 85 90% failure rate but you keep trying but I just keep trying it's tropical you got to have right. it right and so I had four going here and it takes a year and a half for them to produce a ripe pineapple for you. So this one is, you know, about half the size it should be, and I'm hoping it'll continue to grow, you know. But uh, that's, that's, but this one over here was my oldest one, and it used to have a real beautiful thing like this, <laughs> right there. And what Aww. happened, I came out, we had a big storm here a couple days ago, a lot of wind and hard yeah. driving rain, it did some damage. Well, I came out and this thing was hanging like this. Oh. And so I thought, well, I, I got some bamboo again. I got some bamboo stakes and I was going to right it and, and support it upright. And as soon as I lifted on it, it just snapped right off. Yeah. So that's another thing about gardening. Yeah. You know, I mean, I put a year and a half into this. I, I take it in in the winter. I water it religiously. Oh. I, you know, a year and a half. And I got that close to having a pineapple. Now I do have a wonderful looking top that I could twist off and try to start and do another year and a half. Yeah. I could keep going. I guess I will because it looks so good. But I know that's nowhere near ripe. It's no. It's hard as a rock. Yeah. So and it's not going to ripe the right sometimes. way anyway. Okay, let me... Uh... So do they only make one when you do that or...? Yeah, they make one. Because you've got two shoots well, here. Oh, yeah. Sometimes multiple plants. Like, look at that one. There's That could make two pineapples for me, I would think. And did that come out of one head? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I should have separated it, I guess, but it, I didn't even notice it was doing double right away. Uh, okay, let's get going. This is the anisocyte flower, and if you pick these little protruding, little purple flowers, here, put that in your mouth, all of it. Go for it. Chew on it. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a little treat. I like to plant these near my walking paths and stuff, so Sweet. when I walk by, I can grab a couple. Oh, look at the. Oh, you're right, it is. Oh my goodness. It is a magnet. Oh yeah, all kinds of pollinators come here. And the hummingbirds hit these pretty heavy too. Oh, these swallowtails are divine. Yeah, that's mostly the big, the big butterfly I get around here is that yellow one. Yellow swallowtail. Well, people who saw the other video will recognize this uh, archway here. Yeah. We're down here by the creek at my lower garden. It's not as developed as normally. It's all garden down inside the fence there. Uh, but I had to cut back this year. I had a few months where I, first I hurt my left wrist, and then I totally overused. I, <laughs> I, I joked to Kay, you know, she, the viral video she titled, He Did This All By Himself. I said, hey, you can call the next one. He planted this whole garden single-handedly, you know, because I did. I only used I used a little cut-off hoe, and I I got down on the ground and, and I did that because because I, I couldn't really use the big hoe. Nothing stops you. Right, I still did it. So you know, you know, I'm getting back to normal now, but it's a little too late now. So see, usually all along this fence line, I have climbing beans. Uh, oh right. Did not do that this year. I and think I'll you. Really, I think you'll you have plenty I'll of survive, beans. I'll survive. Yeah. Oh, and these two pear apple trees you see here. And the same thing happens every year. I should, I, you know, I, just, I don't know why I, <laughs> I don't know why I have them because I have squirrels here. Okay, so two weeks ago, both these trees were absolutely covered up with fruit. I mean, really a lot. I thought maybe this year I would get some fruit because they got past golf ball size and he wasn't touching them. Uh, okay, and I, also I've been trying to trap the squirrel with have a heart traps. I can't, he's too smart. I think the mice are going in and getting the bait and they don't trip the mechanism because the, the bait goes away, but I never catch anything. Anyway, I didn't come down and look at the trees for two or three days. And when I did, as usual, every year, every single fruit is gone. 
They this must happens. be hoarding it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. This happens Why aren't they year. doing what we're doing when we're shopping? We're just taking one extra, <laughs> two extra. So it's another note to new gardeners. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, I've had this tree here over 20 years. And I think I've eaten five pear apples in 20 years. Oh, my goodness. Nice, the first year, nice big ones. I guess the squirrels weren't here then. I don't think I had squirrels then. And when they showed up is when I, I started having all kinds of trouble. I wonder if... Too late now, but I wonder if you had kept them real pruned down small, w then you could put netting over? Yeah, maybe I would, yeah. It's a little too hard with that. But. Now tell me about the grapes, because my grapes, you know, we did the grape video here. If anybody is uh, interested in knowing how to prune grapevines to this two-string method, which is called, it has a name. The Niffin Forearm System. The Niffin Forearm. Since I didn't get to plant this whole garden this year, I'm going to, you know, use it to my advantage, hopefully. So like this bed right here, this is full of my main weed called ground ivy. And I'm just going to let this grow up for a while yet. And then in the fall, I will probably weed eat it, let all that stuff lay in place. And I'm going to cover this whole bed with, uh, I have a horse manure compost that I have a big pile of. And so I'll get this ready for next year is what's going to happen here. All right, so this here is my sweet potato patch. Uh, these, these were planted maybe three weeks ago and these just about a week ago. But... Uh, you know, you got to mulch all around them real good, and then they, they will just spread out, and they'll cover this whole thing. Will be green soon with sweet potato vines. <clears throat> Here's some of this um, morning glory that gets in here, and it'll really spread. You don't get rid of it. Cucumber? There's two, yeah. There's two of them, or three. Dang, I missed them. I was down here picking yesterday. Come on, come to Papa. All right, well. Save those for seed? Two for the chickens and one, we'll eat that one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Great. All right, so I just built this arch, uh, archway uh, for this year. It's the first year I've had it. And, oh, and I was going to mention, uh, I like to grow as many crops as I can in one space, kind of, you know. So on this one and the little arch up there, uh, this year I grew snow peas on that. And as soon as the snow peas were done, then I planted those lima beans. So mm -hmm. I'm getting two crops off the arch. Mm -hmm. But next year, every space underneath the arch, I'm planting in potatoes. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you plant your lima beans or cucumbers or whatever you're going to have, the potatoes are ready to dig up. Mm -hmm. And you can dig them up and then just mulch that in and have a walking path to come in and harvest. Mm -hmm. So I've got about six different varieties of cucumbers. Already having trouble keeping up with them. The chickens are getting lots of good treats. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I have to get them out. But, uh, that's one. That sh I, I don't should... have any cucumbers. I'm just... That's one for eating right there. Heartbroken. All right. Well, I got a bunch of cucumbers. And then I have, uh, Christmas lima beans. Oh, this is all Christmas lima beans the rest of the way. Except, oh, uh, I don't think it has survived. I had right here on the end a crispy melon from you. That seed, oh. It was growing right here. And it's it's gone. Yeah, I got there's the tag, so I'd remember. Crispy melon. Oh, so, yeah, shoot. It was growing good for a while. But I'm gonna get a lot of lima beans off this. And this is the Christmas lima. That's the big ones, you know, like it's I had huge. up there. Yeah. And wow. I got a, a few more tomatoes. I should get those some some of those seeds from you. Yes. Uh, what are those really tall poles That's for? bamboo. That's bamboo. But I mean, what are they? Well, I originally, see, I, like these, I originally oh, put I them up see. real high, and then I wove other bamboo in between them so it'd make like a basket oh, you know, were to gonna... keep the deer out. And, you know, when you get real, if you get up above 10 feet, it does a pretty good job. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining that but you or know, building it would be... It's very challenged. falling apart looking now, and I, I, I don't have deer. The deer did come in. And they ate a little bit of off this side of the Christmas limas. But they have somewhat recovered now, and the deer didn't come back and finish the job or anything, so that's the only damage I've had from deer. Well, and they can hop this fence easily. Of course. Uh, so, remember uh, when we were here before and you said you were going to replace all those rotten? Well, this was not the. I did replace the rotten one we talked about before. This is my end post. This happened in that big storm we just had a couple oh, days ago. Oh, wow. I came down and, and this is my best vine. 
covered with grapes. Not oh that it my. matters because the squirrel will come and eat these before they get ripe. So, uh, you know, once again, when you're a gardener, you do a lot of work and grow a lot of things for the local wildlife. That's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Not even close to being ripe, are they? I got a few grapes. I got a good amount of grapes this year, but... I oh, yeah. Unbelievable. I won't get the whole cluster to myself. I was here a few years with no squirrels around. Yeah. And I could grow corn and everything. Come on, Pete. So that's all that's left now is to go out front and look at the corn and uh, okay. that teepee out front. All right, we're out in the full sun now in front of the house. And this is the teepee that you see when you first come in. Uh, on this side, I have the um, Chinese yard long bean, the red noodle. And notice that no Mexican bean beetles, that they don't even bother this at all. These, these are, I'm not worried. I'll get lots of beans from these, no problem. Half the way around, teepee. Do you have one that's growing no. that I could see? <laughs> no, they get just a started flowering, so there's okay. no, no bean. I mean, there might be a little one inch one somewhere, but. Okay. Uh, and then here, on this side, I have my Gold Marie, which I love these beans, these yellow flat potted beans. That's what we. And so, see, I, I got some I can harvest, but what happened over here is this morning glory has come in and covered. I, that's all I can see from the outside. Is it is. Morning glory. That's this, right? Yeah. And it, it vines up real fast. And so, I'm oh, going to do. Man, I'm never planning that. No, I never planned it either. It just, the birds bring it in, but I'm going to. I'm going to harvest these beans and then I'm ripping all this out before this morning glory has a chance to flower and seed out. Oh know? yeah. All the area around the teepee here was potatoes and there, there's actually still some in the ground right here. This is actually another pear apple tree. Uh, I was going to say. Don't know why I bother unless I can get rid of the squirrel. And then we got my corn crop over here. Oh my which, goodness. We actually ate corn yesterday for the first time this year. Wow. Can you even walk in there or is it? Uh, get, you know, the weeds are bad on the outside, but, you know, I can, there's not bad on the inside. All right, here's my corn crop this year. Uh, I had given up on growing corn because of the squirrels. But this year I had the idea that maybe right here, because it's right in front of my house, just off the porch, maybe he'd let me alone. Well, this, I think I'm safe from the squirrel. Now, I still could have a deer or a raccoon come in here and get me because this stuff's getting ripe now. But I can't just come in and start picking like crazy and when I see a ripe ear because I, I'm all the times all the years 30 some years I've been growing this corn I'm doing genetic work with it and this it's the fun part to me and you all can do it too if you have an heirloom variety and what I do uh, when I got this look here I had little ears that were about that big this corn produced three to four inch long ears it was pitiful but it tasted so sweet and delicious I, I wanted to grow it and so I started to Anytime I saw an ear that was a little bigger than that, I, I put a ribbon on that and, and I didn't eat that. That became my seed. I selected for bigger ears. Well, now I'm getting, I'm getting foot long ears and everything. I mean, wow. I, you know, and I still keep selecting for big ears. But I also am selecting for, sometimes I find two or even three ears on a plant. Mm -hmm. And so I keep those for seed too, mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're good, well developed ears. So I can't just come in here and start picking. Now, look, like this one. It has one ear, pretty good size, and an, an ear that's not going to make, you know. Mm -hmm. So, except for the fact it has a big ear, I don't know, I might keep that for the bigness. All right, now here would be one I could pick, because it's just a solo ear, and it's not particularly big. Mm -hmm. So, I think we're going to pick that one, because it looks... Oh, I want to eat it. The way you tell if corn's ripe is you're looking at the silks. Like, look at this one over here. See how it's still pliable and green and growing and, you know, it's kind of wet, not wet, but, you know, moist feeling. It's moist at the top. Yeah, you can tell there's liquid in there. This is dried up. This is all dried up like old hay or something. Mm -hmm. When you see that, now the corn's ripe. Okay. And you open it up, and it, they've developed all the way to the top. So Ooh. this one's perfect. Wow, I have to eat it. Yep, Kay's going to eat that. As I work through picking my corn, I occasionally will find some that I'm really impressed with, and I'll, I'll tie a red ribbon around it or something to make sure I, I don't mistakenly pick that later. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I select my seed each year, and mm -hmm. it's really paid off. I mean, I, that's the fun part. You can make a big change like that. I went from ears half this size, so this is more about my average right now, and sometimes longer, and I keep them for seed, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. And tell me about the, you got a lot of biomass here when it's 
everything's done. Tell oh, us. Yeah, everything. I mean, tell us what you when and what you do. Well, it all goes into compost, or sometimes I might lay it in the very bed where it grew if I'm planning on putting manure or, or compost on top for the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'll do that and let it compost in place. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I like to rotate beds for a variety of reasons. And, you know, it helps with pests and stuff supposedly. But every plant, and this is true for your weeds too, every plant is drawing up a different variety of nutrients out of the soil and concentrating this mineral or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so when you add that to your compost, now you brought in this new treasure trove of, of magnesium or you know whatever it concentrated. And so the weeds are useful for that because they sometimes they reach down deep into the clay and they're bringing up stuff that you know wasn't available up higher in the soil. And now you're going to lay it right on top and make it available when you put the compost down. So, you know, and every plant, you know, corn concentrates different nutrients than kale and, and beans, and it's all different. So, it all goes into compost. Good dog. You know, no snake is going to come out of that nah, hole and bite me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like snakes. <laughs> hey, Petey. Petey would probably eat this corn if I let him, right? Oh, yeah. No, he's not getting my corn. Hey, everybody, I hope videos like this are instructional inspiring you to grow your own food if you enjoy the content like this please leave a comment below so that we know to do more you know he's a treasure trove <laughs> he, he that guy <laughs> Daryl's a treasure trove of information and I learned a lot from him and I hope you have too uh, we've got about 10 videos in the playlist now don't we wow. yeah that we shot together and uh, only one of, I think one or two of them were at my house, technically, <laughs> but he was still the teacher. Anyway, I am going to, to try this corn after I sign off. I just hope that you, if you are benefited from these videos, that you yeah. will subscribe, yeah. click the bell for notifications, scroll down and click all, so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. And I want to give a special shout out to all my new subscribers got a lot of those and I really appreciate your support so thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video or I will anyway <laughs> <laughs> I like it right off the I bet you won't eat that <laughs> no he knows what the good point all is all right let's try this <clears throat> you'll have that at your house soon <clears throat> planted the same variety right Exactly. This is the variety I planted. Mmm. Right. You know, in California, I would just go out. I had such a small little stand of corn, and I would just go out and, and eat everything that was ripe right there in the <laughs> garden, and then there was nothing to bring in the house. Well, I don't, I don't cook mine much. I, I, I get a steamer already steaming, and I put the ears in for three minutes. That's it. Mm. And, and then eat it. Perfect. Yep. I love it raw, but I think that would be even better. Mm. Your bamboo steamer? No, I have a big stainless steel <laughs> one, but could use the bamboo one. Mm. When I was a kid, they, we used to have these family reunions, and they would roast corn in between wet layers of burlap over a fire, and just roast it. Oh man, you'd, you know, it still had the husk on, you know? And you'd get it and you'd peel the husk back. Oh, that was delicious stuff. The burlap didn't burn? No, and they kept it wet. You know, they, they'd rotate it. And so the bottom one would get, they'd flip it oh. around. Yeah, it was a big thing. It doesn't take long. No, right. You're just steaming it for three five. minutes is all you need, yeah. Well, maybe five through the husk, you know, I'd do it a little bit longer maybe. Mm. That one. Pretty good, huh? Mm. I grew up in a family of six, so if we had corn, I just kept working on it until it was just <laughs> bare. You know, other people will lay it down after the first choice bites. Mm -mm. I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You want my cob? Did you eat that, wouldn't you? Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Did you get a treat? See you next time. See y'all. Hey, Petey, how's that cob? Yeah, he's eating everything, cob and all. He's eating the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> is that good, Pete? Good boy. He's not a vegetarian, is he? <laughs> no. He is right now. <laughs>